Okay, in the last lesson we uh, we got hold of these varying arguments on the command line, but we didn't really do anything with them except print them out. What we'd like to do now then is, is, is have a choice where we do or don't have to enter these values uh, manually. If they're entered at the command line, we just, we just go straight through and we don't bother asking for manual entry of information. Now there's a few things I need to do before we get on with that. The first thing I need to do is, um, well first of all we don't need any of this anymore. Uh, we'll see for loops again in the future, but at least we've seen them once. We, we will be seeing them again. I'll need to declare all of these variables kind of up front. There we are, let's get, let's get rid of all of these uh, things here. And where's the one with the year? Yes, I need the one with the year too. I need to get that at the top. So all of these declarations need to be at the top there like that. Now this, this human interest um, calculation, we, we'll do this at the end once we've got the values in either manually or from the command line. Does that solve that one? Yeah, that's good. Okay, let's get these. This is the manual entry section. And, oh, shouldn't have got rid of that. Semicolon, let's have remember, it's full stop for C++. Let's put these together. They all go together, so let's group them together. Some boys and girls dancing together there. So, so far again, we're still, you know, we're still pretty manual. But what we'll do now is the following. We'll say, Oh, we haven't actually used this yet. We should have used this a while ago, but let's not worry too much about that. If some condition is true, i.e. not zero, and that's what if is going to usually mean. If something is not zero, therefore it's true. If argc is equal to one, uh, notice a little thing here. We can't say argc equal to 1, because what that does is that's an assignment that will set argc equal to 1, and that will return true because it'll work, so this will always be true. We need to put a double equal symbol. This is saying, not set argc to 1, this is saying is argc equal to 1. Remember, if argc is equal to 1, we've entered no parameters to the program. The first parameter in our bag of oranges coming into the program will just be the program name, and that's it. We always get the program name. Argc will always be at least one. Okay, now we're going to put all these manual entries in that farmer's field there. We're saying, if only one argument has come in, the program name, you need to enter everything else manually. Otherwise... What else? And you can put another if on here if you like. Uh, else if. But let's not do that for the moment. Otherwise... Do something else. Super. Now let's just... Um, let's just put these in the correct position. Need to indent everything so that we can read the program later, or someone who has to come after you can read the program, and even you in six months' time can read the program. Okay, now, otherwise, there is more than one variant um, parameter coming to the program, therefore, I'm just going to make the assumption that someone has entered parameters on the command line, as in that there, where the, that's been entered, that's been entered, and that's been entered. Oops. Can't get a hold of that last one. Oh, there we go. Got it. Okay, now, so let's let's capture those um, those things. Principle is equal to argv one. Remember, that's the that's the first floor, the second floor of the building. The first floor of the building is the name of the program. Now that's not actually going to work. Why not? Because if you remember from last time, that is a string. Now I know the string will say 100, but it's a string at 100, it's not a number 100. Principle is a double, so what we're going to use is a special built-in command, it's called atof. It's not a man in top hat and tails walking down the road in London at midnight. Atof is um, okay, a string to a, a float basically. 
So that's going to take a string as its argument and then turn it into a float. And that, that's okay for, for doubles here. So I know this is a double. But so we just take that and it, it returns a, a, you know, something with a decimal point. That's fantastic. Uh, now the second variable was a double as well, human interest. So you will go uh, human interest. Oh, so hilarious, human interest. If, if you don't think it's funny, then um, yeah, I'm very sorry for you. argv2 is turned, this string is turned into a, a, a decimal point number as well. And the final one, it's not a decimal point type number, it's just a simple counting number. So that's going to be years of loan is equal to a to i, so to an int, to an int, not to a floating number. Now you can see there's a bit of hard coding here. Now I'm going to sort this out in the next program. Uh, when I sort it out in the next program, uh, we'll use a thing called enum, which is uh, which is quite handy. We'll, we'll we'll have a look at enum in the next lesson. Okay, so that should be fine. Now we've got rid of all our outputs. Uh, if we run this program now from the command line, let's hope, hopefully it work. We're just going straight into the program. It's going, oh, okay. It comes into the program. Argc is, is full, so it's not going to go into here. That we've, It's not going to go into here, the stuff we've been doing earlier. It's going to go to the else condition, and then it's just going to take the first parameter, set it to principal. Second parameter, set it to human interest. And so third parameter, set it to years of loan, and then off we go with the rest of the program. We've already done, and um, we, we will be changing later, but not right now. Oh, what's going on? Oh, that should be entering. Uh, I've got to finish this one off. Sorry, just get rid of that one. Clear that. Forget, forget. Pretend you didn't see me do that. Okay, three parameters. Bang. But the problem is, is we've got these. We've got this loan structure, but we don't know what the loan was. So we need to output what all the information is. So let's quickly do that now. Uh, we'll have that here, either manually or via the recent messages here. That is equal to what principle obviously principal end line um, the interest rate Ooh. oh well we'll do that later hopefully oh Well, I we managed to uh, sort that one out. Uh, we'll put a little, um, we'll put a little percent symbol there. Why not? And what we'll also do is, obviously, we need to just say what the um, time period is. And what's that going to be? Years of loan. There we are. And we'll just put a little helpful message here. Might be one year, mightn't it? So we better put uh, better put that. Now, hopefully, that will produce something that's uh, worth looking at. So let's have a little look at that. See what that does. That looks nice, doesn't it? So it's a hundred dollar loan, one percent interest rate, and it's for one year. Payments each month, eight dollars and thirty-eight cents. Let's just check that that works on the command line. Should do, obviously, but let's just do it anyway. You never know. Yeah. So we've got loan principles, one hundred dollars. Interest rates, one percent. Time period is one year. Payments, eight point three eight dollars a month. And there's the and there's the amortizing schedule. So I think we're done on that. Um, See you next time when we'll look into the excitement of Enum.